partner uh, opportunities in agri-tech in South Africa. Um, we, my name is Camilo Ramada. I'm a senior advisor. For uh, Business Finland uh, organizes this event together with the Finnish Embassy in Pretoria, where we are uh, physically right now. The, together, when we work together with Business Finland, the Embassy of Finland and other Finnish public stakeholders, we call ourselves Team Finland. So welcome to the Team Finland webinar on opportunities in agricultural technology. We've got really a jam-packed program for you, uh, which I will uh, go through. But first, maybe some practical issues. Um, as you can read yourself, uh, the organizer uh, has uh, switched your mic and camera off, um, which means that your questions, please post them in the chat, in the meeting chat, and then we will uh, moderate those questions live, so we, we, we might uh, uh, um, get back to them still in the chat, uh, and otherwise we take them to watch the, the Q&A sessions, which are at the end of each, of, of, of each block. Um, and please, when you post a question, remember to say who you are and who you represent. That's also interesting. It's also a great way of giving yourself some exposure. Uh, and and, and uh, please feel free to, to shamelessly promote yourself. Um, so the event is being recorded, uh, which you can see in, 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 in the screen. Uh, we, 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 we therefore assume that you, that you agree with that. Um, as far as the program goes, Please note that these are all Finnish times. Uh, we do hope that it's clear for everyone. We have more than 80, uh, um, as there are three blocks, uh, some participants may choose to, uh, to, 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 to pick and choose which block or which blocks they want to participate in. We've got the opening block, uh, which has just started. Uh, we've got a, a session on water, soil and energy. Uh, and soil in South Africa includes also the, the issue of fertilizer because we don't have all soil is, is, is arable. Uh, and then we've got session B uh, about technology equipment and precision farming. Um, the, 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 um, uh, ju just to make it absolutely clear, uh, session A starts at 11.30 Finnish time, which is then at 10.30 uh, South African time. Uh, session B starts at one o'clock finish time, which is at midday at noon at 12 o'clock South African time. Just to have that clear for everyone. Um, we've got really um, uh, a, a great lineup for you guys, all uh, rock stars. Uh, we've got uh, in each block, uh, Craig Murrell, uh, strategy lead at Agri Enterprise, uh, giving some general information. Um, Agri, Agri Enterprise is part of uh, Agri SA, uh, the, 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 the biggest uh, or, or, or the, the South African um, confederation uh, in, in agriculture, uh, which, which, which aggregates a lot of stakeholders and who is a partner in this, in this event. Um, and, 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 and Agri Enterprise is the, is the PTY, the commercial uh, uh, branch of Agri SA through which they, they, they promote a lot of uh, economic activity in this country. So we are very, very happy to have Craig uh, presenting uh, and, and, and giving. Uh, I had a sneak peek at his presentations. He gives really deep insights uh, and intelligence into, into the local market. So don't miss any of his three presentations. Um, we have uh, in the first block, uh, I will present the speakers of the other blocks when we get to those blocks. But we have in the first block also uh, Ms. Jenny Kielhoma, uh, the Agricultural Councillor at the Embassy of Finland in Pretoria. Uh, she also has a strong background in the Finnish um, agricultural scene, uh, and she will give uh, you some inf so, uh, a really good overview of what is happening in Finland in agricultural technology. Um, Finland is a country that has uh, a very strong commitment to agriculture and a very strong commitment to technological innovation. And um, Finland also has a very challenging climate and that challenging climate uh, with um, b both the, the temperature wise, so very cold in winter, but also the, the, the fact that it's very long, do very dark days in winter. So uh, have to make optimum use of sunlight. 
um, uh, large patches of forest, so, so not a lot of large uh, grazing uh, or, or agricultural area. So all these geographic and climate um, challenges have made Finland be very, very, very innovative in agriculture. And I am sure you're going to enjoy um, everything you learned today. Um, so welcome. Thank you for, for participating. Thank you for making time. Uh, and I would love to give the, the, the word to uh, Craig Morell, the strategy lead at Agri Enterprise, who will present uh, an overview. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Just want to confirm if you can see me and if my presentation is sharing in the full it screen, is. full it screen is. mode. There we go. OK, thanks so much, Camilla. Thanks so much for Team Finland for having Agri Enterprises here as part of this webinar. We're really excited to be here. And again, thanks to our shareholders, Agri SA, for enabling this partnership. So just a bit of background. I'm a strategy lead at Agri Enterprises and yeah, what we do is agri-enterprises agri creates innovative solutions in commercial agriculture in South Africa and across Africa. What we'll be covering in the three different uh, sessions, the first session is going to be just an intro to the company and the overview of South African agriculture as we see it. The second session will be on natural resources, water, solar, energy, and the third will be on tech, equipment and precision farming. So to jump into the first session, who we are, just really briefly, uh, we're a company that is owned, the, the shareholders are Agri SA, they're the largest federation of uh, agricultural federation in the country and in Africa. Agri Enterprises, we do five things. We do strategy, specifically market penetrations, mergers, entries, um, market mapping. We do ops and agri funding. We have a training and development division. They currently provide industry specific scarce skills training. We do sustainability and innovation solutions and bespoke industry specific R&D. When a client wants to know something specific about agriculture, we get involved. That's just a really high level who we are, but you're here for what is South Africa. So I'd like to present um, the overview of South African agriculture as we understand it. It's a good way to kick it off. Um, not everyone's been blessed to live in such a, a beautiful, hot and sometimes freezing cold country. And I just wanted to share some of the insights. Um, when talking value, these are some of the largest um, agricultural companies listed on our stock exchange called the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Um, the value wise, this is a little bit old, um, but we see that we don't really have any trillion trillion euro companies listed here, um, but in the 100, 100 billion euro range and in the single billion euro range. And these are in the food and fiber sector. These are not only food companies. You'll see two of the largest forestry companies in the country are here at 10.7 billion being Mondi and 1.7 billion market cap, of course, being SAPI. So what really is South African agriculture? We see that livestock takes up 51% of uh, South African agriculture by, uh, by GDP composition from in 2020, followed by field crops. Those are things that you plant and harvest the same year. And in horticulture, those are things like trees you plant and you leave them for a long time and they bear fruit over and over again and you harvest continuously for a number of years. The sector employs just under a million people directly and the top uh, field crop commodities by value, we're looking at maize and sugarcane. Really interesting, this is 2020 value. Our um, annual tonnage has just swapped for the first time in a very long time and our biggest crop is sugarcane off the field by tonnage by over a million tons. That's in terms of expectations, and it's very good to see the sugar industry recovering the way it has been, given the drought and the RV price declines over the last five years. Looking a little bit further, some of the top horticultural um, crop values um, by commodity, we see grapes being one of the largest, 44%, citrus 27%. Basically, horticulture accounts for 20% of all fertilizer application in the country. The other largest one being the field crops, specifically maize. And the Western Cape as a province generates 37% of South, Africans, South Africa's horticultural GDP. 
So we're in South Africa. Uh, some people may have mentioned the maize, uh, so the maize triangle, specifically our field crops being maize are between Northwest Free State and Pumalanga being provinces. But just in quick overview, um, agricultural growth is largely export driven in high value, concentrated value chains. If you have a look down to the bottom right hand side, you'll see that climate change is shifting production eastwards in the country towards the green areas. This is the highest potential agricultural land in the country. We're a coastal country. We are not landlocked. So the coastal areas are the highest, you know, have the highest production potential. Soil degradation and water availability in the central and western parts. So here, these orange parts here will continue to shape the production areas in these regions. This means extensive livestock and extensive grains that rely on annual rainfall are generally the only things that can be done there. There are, of course, exceptions. I mean, um, the Tuung area is one of the best wheat areas in the country and it's also one of the driest provinces in the country here bordering between Northwest and Northern Cape. So we have a couple really interesting areas in South Africa for agriculture, if you wanted to know. I mentioned the Maize Triangle. That's this area here, this sort of creamish color area. We have a subtropical belt, which starts up here almost at Zanin and extends straight south down, wraps around Lesotho, uh, wraps around Eswatini, and comes all the way down here almost to Durban, wrapping up into the northern parts, um, just past the north of Richards Bay. We also have a sugar belt that starts at the coast and runs the whole way down the coast, which actually swaps into dry land sugar. It doesn't need to be irrigated. It just rains so much that sugarcane is, you know, gets enough annual rainfall. And then we have our high value crop uh, areas, these blue areas, uh, this number four and this number six is really big in high value fruits, high value crops. And you can see the arrows. This is generally where a lot of the produce moves. So into markets and ports being in Johannesburg, Durban, Kolbecha, Eastern Cape, and Cape Town. Um, it's categorized by co-ops. We use a cooperative system. A lot of the, lot of the largest agribusinesses in the country are either farmer owned or have now also listed and also publicly owned uh, or have public investment. When we talk about GDP of agriculture, we're looking at about 3% of GDP in primary agriculture. It is not that massive at the primary level. However, it was the only industry in all quarters during COVID to be on the increase. And when we include agricultural processing, the number gets closer to 18% of GDP as of last year. What do farmers and where does agriculture spend its money? So looking uh, from a data um, um, source in 2020, we see that there was about 151 billion rand spent in farmer inputs and on farm spend, with the largest being farm animal, farm feeds, so animal feeds. Interestingly, in electricity being about 5% and um, also mentioned fuel being 8% because this ties in really well with the other, sec the other sections. We're looking at ways that biofuels and bioenergies and renewable energies can integrate into agriculture. Farmers in South Africa are incredibly in, 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 in the ingenuity of South African farmers is excellent and they're always looking for ways to optimize but also to further save costs and a lot of them have been integrating and implementing systems that themselves reduce their reliance on the providers of these natural resources and of these farm planning resources. So if you are a provider of solutions in the biofuels, bioenergy space, please stay tuned. And that brings an end to just the overview of South African agriculture as we see it. Thank you so much for those, for those, for those very interesting uh, and, and very quick and very deep insights. Uh, that is really, really appreciated. Uh, stay tuned for, for Craig's uh, further presentations in block A and block B, where he goes much deeper uh, into 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 specific sectors and, and, and gives very good information and intelligence uh, on those sectors. Um, and now uh, I, I didn't see any questions in the in the in the Q and A. Uh, I, I guess that makes a lot of sense because of of the general uh, type of introduction. Uh, I, I expect more questions to come in the in 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 the blocks A and block B. Um, but 
uh, to everyone on the on the call uh, last uh, opportunity if you want to if you want to ask uh, Craig uh, any specific questions about his presentation that he, that he just made um, now, now is um, is a great opportunity and if there are no questions uh, then I suggest we move on to the next topic uh, on our agenda uh, where uh, we do the other way around. We present uh, give an overview of the Finnish landscape uh, as far as, as agricultural uh, technology is concerned. May, may I introduce Ms. Jenny Kielhoma, uh, the agricultural counselor at the Embassy of Finland in Pretoria. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Apologies for the technical glitch. Uh, thank you, Camilo, and uh, and good morning, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Jenny Kilholma. I am the agriculture counselor here at the Embassy of Finland in Pretoria. First of all, I would like to thank you all for joining joining us today. Uh, for some to learn insights about South African uh, market and agriculture, and for some about Finnish solutions. But most of all to share, to connect, and to get to know each other. So welcome. Um, Camilo already mentioned this shortly, uh, but I'm not sure how much um, or how well our South African audience um, is familiar with Finland. So I would like to start uh, with just a quick word about Finland as an agriculture country. And let me see if I can share my presentation. Um, here we go. Just bear with me. There we go. All right. So Finland can be this. In the winter, uh, temperatures can go up to minus 40 Celsius. Um, it's dark and it's cold, but it's also extremely pretty. And if you're wondering what's the, the sticky thing on the right hand, uh, on the right hand side on the first picture, that's actually a street sign. Um, but then again, Finland can be this. This is a photo um, I received from a farmer last uh, last summer where it was so hot that the, the the dairy cows also had to go and cool down in in one of our our lakes to um, to freshen up. Um, it actually was uh, plus forty, so the temperature differences uh, between the seasons can be truly um, impressive. Well, as the whole country is located uh, north of 360th latitude, uh, we are the northernmost country in Europe um, and most northern country where uh, extensive commercial agriculture is, um, is practiced. This means that the winters are cold, uh, as illustrated in the previous photos. Um, so the conditions are tough. For instance, you know, animal housings has to be very well insulated and managed. And the northern location also means that our summers um, are warm and the sun shines through the night, but the growth season is really short. Um, even though we are extremely blessed with the, uh, these extreme seasons and we do love it, um, it comes with uh, some severe challenges, especially when, um, when thinking of growing food. So this has forced Finnish farmers kind of thinking outside the box. And I'm sure the South African farmers can kind of relate um, and Burmark and Plan, as they say. Um, so this has led to development of innovation and technology, um, which has helped the Finnish farming uh, to take huge leaps to the exporting country it is, today. it is today. It's maybe hard to believe sometimes that Finland was an extremely poor country about well, less than 100 years ago. So this is my grandpa, about 1950. And he just came back from war and uh, got straight, uh, straight down to business and started uh, you know, working to feed his growing family and the, and the war ravaged country. And here, we, here, here are we now, Finland 2021, where we manage our, our dairy farms with, uh, with smartphones. So today we are going to be treated with some glimpses of the technologies and solutions that Finland has developed since that time when Grandpa Erki was plowing his field with the horse. So the farmers and food industry nowadays, it's not all about taste or profit. What is almost more important is sustainability, safety, traceability, 
and transparency, uh, transparency throughout the whole food chain. Actually, interestingly, um, I, I was uh, attending the AgriSA yearly conference last week, and the first thing um, was mentioned in the presidential address for sustainability. Innovative farmers and food business operators uh, that operate in the entire spectrum of uh, from farm to fork are finding ways on incorporating sustainability to their operations. Not only on reducing carbon emissions on their path to carbon neutrality, but also optimizing um, water footprint, uh, stopping and even reversing biodiversity loss and eutrophication. And on top of that, um, optimizing animal welfare in art with artificial uh, intelligence. Ms. Ira from HK Scan actually will walk us through a whole ecosystem built around this idea later on today. When it comes to animal production, as a veterinarian myself, I cannot help but to highlight a topic of most importance, and it's the animal welfare. There are some fascinating experiences coming from Finland. As an example, there's a, a commercial test farm. Uh, in, effort, in efforts of increasing um, animal welfare, then additional enrichments were, were put in the in the pens, like rope, straw bales, um, as such, um, for, for the chicken lay. And smart cameras were installed to record animal activity. It is probably a no-brainer, but activity and natural behavior of these animals increased significantly. And this, on the other hand, would reduce stress to animals um, and, of course, losses, economical losses coming uh, uh, because of that, and also reduce the other management issues. I believe that we might have the representative from pork industry here today, um, so I cannot help but to point out um, the right bottom corner of the screen, um, a speciality of Finland, uh, that is uh, pigs with tails. With the innovation and management solutions, even the large commercial producers in Finland do not have to cut the tails of the pigs anymore. And it makes business sense. The tails are actually a well-priced delicacy, for instance, in the Asian market. Why I highlight these issues, especially to our South African audience, is that in the Finnish and Nordic market, and even in the European market in general, the consumer trend is strongly towards favoring these, um, let's say, non-taste, non-price values, for the lack of a better term, and not only animal welfare, but uh, in a broader sense. Um, let's take an example of an important export item to South Africa, which is wine. Last year alone, um, sales of wines labeled organic increased 29% in Finland. Um, wines labeled ethical, meaning um, that they had specific certificate for labor issues. Um, that those wines uh, grew 37% uh, last year in sales. So this is an indication that if you want to sell your product to a par particular market, it is important to take these issues into consideration. And how you can reach this is using technology, uh, new technologies and innovations in your uh, um, uh, in your companies, basically in your farming practices. So digitalization in general is the core of the future of food production. Uh, what you can't measure, you cannot manage. So we have today very interesting digital solutions for farm management presented by Ms. Olga from MTech. Also, uh, GrainSense will present the exciting, very hands-on technology monitoring uh, quality of grains. When it comes to um, sustainability, there is also an idea of circular uh, economy, kind of beyond the thinking of sustainability. So nothing is wasted, everything is used, reused and put back into circulation. There will be a fascinating uh, presentation by a company called Honkayoki, uh, and they will show how this circular economy ideology um, can also fit meat industry um, in an abattoir setting. Thinking of circular economy, we will also hear from Biosorbio, about a new generation of environmentally friendly uh, fertilizer that keeps our, also our waterways clean. Lastly, water, probably the most important item for all life. We will hear an uh, overview of different solutions uh, for wa water management from the Finnish Water Forum, uh, Finnish Water Forum from Mr. Topi Helle. So the last thing I would like to highlight um, is that the government of Finland has recently launched uh, an Africa strategy. The different ministries in Finland have been tasked to create practical steps forward to move the strategy from paper into action. 
Also, Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry in Finland are busy with this work as we speak. Even though it's not finalized yet, one thing is clear. The actions focused beyond political dialogue to um, economic partnerships and investments. The Africa strategy as a whole emphasizes the importance uh, to strengthen mutually beneficial political and economic sectors and relations um, in areas such as env environmental and water management, water security, as well as food security. And the emphasis is on especially um, one health thinking uh, that combines human, animal and environmental health. And agriculture is, of course, in the core of all of this. Uh, Perhaps this is a good moment to take a, oh, here we can see our companies. My apologies, I forgot to change my slides. <laughs> um, so there we go. We have a, a selection of uh, uh, six fantastic presentations uh, and, and pictures from uh, companies today. So what I wanted to say, I um, wanted to take a little sidestep um, and highlight that South Africa is an extremely important trade partner in agricultural products to Finland. Finnish consumers have taken South African high quality uh, agricultural products to their hearts and to their dinner tables, especially fruit and of course wine, and actually more recently also rooibos tea. So this is a good starting point uh, for a partnership that we would like to grow and develop in the years to come. In fact, uh, Finland aims to double the trade between herself and Africa by 2030. And efforts are made to significantly increase investment uh, of Finnish companies in Africa and African companies in Finland during this same period until 2030. Um, and South Africa, of course, being one of the most prosperous countries in the continent, makes South Africa naturally one of the most valuable partners to Finland. So Finland can introduce cutting edge and competitive ex uh, expertise and technology that can help to increase the productivity of South African companies and as a consequence, uh, create decent jobs also in the agriculture sector. Uh, Craig was also pointing this out, but there are several global challenges such as climate change, threats to our bio biodiversity, diminishing of our waste, freshwater resources, unexpected economic shifts, etc. And these are becoming more and more prominent and unpredictable. So we need collaboration. We need to share ideas, technologies and best practices, just like we've done with our neighbors for generations, but also in a global scale between friends from South and the North, East and the West. So with these words, I wish you a fantastic day and really encourage everyone, please, please post questions and engage in discussions with each other. Uh, just the last, last one here. Um, we and I uh, here at the Embassy of Finland uh, are to assist and help with any connections and engagements you would be interested in even after this event. In this slide you can see my contact details and also um, links to our presence in the in the social media and the online world. So thank you very much and back to you chairperson. Um, I must say thank you uh, Jenny. Jenny. That was, that was incredibly, incredibly interesting. interesting. Um, I think you really gave some a, a lot of more depth uh, to the to the to the focus of this event, which is these these innovations, these technological innovations in agriculture. Um, South African farming is not uh, alien to these innovations. Uh, South African farming is highly modernized, but there are so many incredibly um, cutting edge technologies and innovations coming out of Finland that they. Uh, in my opinion, very interesting for, for, for the South African stakeholders and, and, and we look very much forward uh, to presenting them to you in, in, in the next blocks. Um, we have uh, advanced quite a lot uh, on, on, our, on our agenda, uh, especially in the absence of, of, of questions, um, which I'll take as a compliment to the speakers. Um, but uh, please feel free to still uh, post your questions in, in, in the chat. Um, and, and, and we have the speakers here uh, to answer them uh, and you can continue doing that. Uh, but in the meantime, I will start running you through the through the program for the for, for, for the two sessions and I will ask uh, my colleagues to 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 let me know if there are any questions. And um, let's start um, with the first question uh, from Jenny herself and I'm. Um, 
not sure if she's going to ask herself a question or if she is going to. Uh, but please, uh, but please go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. Thank you so much, Camilo. I just thought that uh, um, we have some time here. Maybe I, I'm brave enough to ask a question myself. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, all right. Uh, Craig, you were mentioning about uh, uh, that one of your services is market penetration and entry. Um, is this uh, also something that you can do for for foreign companies, like the Finnish companies here? How how is uh, how could you help um, the Finnish companies with the with the you know information for market penetration and and how to, how they can enter here? Thank you. Thanks very much, Annie. So that is something that we do very frequently, and we also do with a lot of ease for companies of various different scales and different sizes. So we do have South African as well as African clients that are currently engaging with us to better understand South African agriculture and how their services, how their products can be integrated with the South African agriculture value chain, all the way from I mean, primary agriculture, even to tertiary processing. Now looking at how do I mean, bioenergies, how do biofuels and rebates, how are they applicable on farms? We're very well integrated throughout the agriculture value chain. That's something that we do do. We engage with local and international firms to do South African market penetrations and market entries. Um, that, that was a really that, that was a really good question, Yanni. Thank you. I I I I I I I, I do believe that that is uh, definitely an opportunity for everyone, uh, for every Finnish stakeholder here, to have that direct contact with um, with 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 AgriTech. Uh, with, with with Craig's company, uh, they, 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 as he sh showed in his in his previous slide, they offer fantastic services, and, and they'll gladly offer them to you. And and and, and we we have a, a trust relation with them, so 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 we're very very uh, glad uh, if, if 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 they can help you uh, find markets and and, and do business um, as, as 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 a public stakeholder. We will also obviously always uh, indicate you. Uh, several options that you that, that you can work with. Um, Christopher has a question uh, and he asks uh, Craig, uh, I was wondering whether Craig could provide a brief overview of the competition in these markets in SA, i.e. which countries and uh, MNCs are the biggest players? How does the competitive dynamics look like there? And which specific role could Finland take upon your understanding or finish, uh, uh, which role could Finland take uh, as far as your understanding goes of, of Finnish uh, know-how and, and, and offerings? So, so, so that, that I think that's, a, that's an amazing question. Um, does it make any sense for Finnish companies to try to come here? Uh, how, how, how big, how fierce is the competition? Uh, where is the competition is strongest? Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, Camilla. So looking at MNCs, my understanding, multinational corporations, um, we see a incredibly sophisticated market in South Africa. Multinationals in South Africa make do business by buying other businesses that have got well-established legacy brands that are well and rooted in South African um, in the South African market. So what we are looking at, for example, so AB and Bev bought out SAB Miller, so the largest um, beer manufacturer in the world, bought the second largest. I think there was a $116 billion or $120 billion deal, something like that. PepsiCo bought Pioneer Foods, for example, in 2017. They're currently rolling out a development fund. And we have the potential merger between Heineken buying out the Stell. So multinational corporations, what it looks like is they buy other companies and they use the South African track record of these other companies and they buy them out. And that's typically how MNCs get involved in South Africa through what we've seen. Um, brand placement in South Africa is, I wouldn't say it's tricky, but establishing brands from the get-go are tough and multinational corporations make use of economies of scale to, for example, make the exact same product in the exact same plant, package it differently and send it to seven different African countries. So you'll see that a lot of MNCs in South Africa actually have got their production bases all around the country, down from Lampert's in Western Cape all the way up to Gauteng here in Midrand. Most of our fine food in the country is made in Gauteng. And then the exact same products and the exact same spec are packaged differently for different markets and exported globally, globally, but specifically up through Africa. And that's a large role of what MNCs do. Um, 
we've got a good understanding of how MNC is playing in the country and in Africa. But really good question. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Craig, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Christopher, again for, for the question. Um, um, you, you are still free to, answer, to, to ask more questions on the chat. Uh, and if you do, uh, in, in, in the next uh, uh, 15 minutes, then, then we will still answer them. Um, so let's look at what we're doing uh, later, later in the morning or in the afternoon, depending on which time zone you are. Um, we've got uh, session A, which is about uh, water, soil, uh, which includes fertilizer and energy. Um, those are those are uh, natural natural resources, as, as, as Craig mentioned. They, they they are essential for agriculture. They are they are, they are the, the 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 enabling uh, context for agriculture, and all of them uh, are uh, challenging in uh, South Africa. Uh, we we are a water scarce country. Not all our, our uh, soil uh, is arable, as you saw in Craig's presentation. There's large parts of the country which are desert. Um, and, and we have a very uh, uh, unstable energy supply from, from the National uh, Energy Company. So these are the, the, where there are uh, rolling blackouts um, on, on, on an ongoing basis uh, and where there's just not enough energy to sustain any, 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 any industrial or, or economic growth in the country. So if we look at, 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 at what can be done there, and, and, and again, uh, Craig will then uh, give, 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 give an introduction there, uh, give some insights, uh, some really good insights, and uh, then uh, we will move to, to presenting some solutions from Finland. And, and, and these solutions are all um, particular um, uh, um, examples uh, of, of a much bigger picture. So uh, Finland has a lot of excellence in water treatment, and, and we are very uh, happy to have the CEO of the Finnish uh, Water Forum, Topi Helle, uh, presenting uh, a, a really good overview of what of, of what Finland uh, does. Uh, they, 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 the, the Finnish Water Forum, being a a um, a, 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 a an organization that represents uh, a membership-based organization that represents uh, Finnish companies that have excellence in water. So they are not directly a supplier, but they uh, can uh, represent. Uh, the, the wider Finnish ecosystem in, 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 in water uh, excellence. Uh, and in this particular presentation, we will talk about water treatment. Um, then um, soil fertilizer and uh, regenerative agriculture. Uh, we have invited uh, Mr. Chris Ndlovu. Uh, he is in Zambia, uh, the CEO of a Finnish company called BioRazor. Uh, BioRazor has developed an amazing uh, fertilizer that uh, works with very, very, very little uh, water, uh, and 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 is uh, creating uh, incredible uh, results. They have uh, already opened a factory for this fertilizer in Zambia. Uh, they are uh, looking forward to taking the whole world by storm, especially water scarce areas. Um, and once again, this will give you a good example of the kind of things that uh, Finland uh, does. Uh, but there are uh, many other companies uh, doing other things uh, in that area, uh, and 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 through Chris's presentation, you will be able to 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 see uh, a, a really good example of, of of a trailblazing company in this area. Um, then, uh, then 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 we will have uh, Ms. Ida Haryu, uh, the development project manager of uh, Hakaskan uh, Hakaskan. As, uh, and all these companies were mentioned before by my colleague Yenny. Uh, Hakaskan is, is, is in, in, the, in the pork uh, meat production, a really big uh, uh, company. Uh, and, and they have um, uh, an amazing project of, 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 of making their, 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 their production more animal friendly, more uh, planet friendly, uh, and, and therefore obviously more consumer friendly. Um, and, and, and it's a very, very, very exciting um, uh, um, uh, presentation too. So those presentations will, um, uh, will come in, in our next session, uh, which is at, um, at, at 11.30 Finnish time, which is 10.30 um, South, South, South African time. Um, 
so so let's uh, go back to the to the to the chat uh uh Juha Ruipo asks uh, to Craig uh, what kind of political pressures are driving uh, South African agriculture in Europe farm to fork is tightening many environmental requirements do you find the same kind of pressures in South Africa and I would like to add to that question uh, do those pressures or, or, or developments exist internally and otherwise are South African or African farmers feeling those pressures from the export markets which are those European markets which are also tight with so, so are they directly or in how far are those uh, th those developments in sustainability directly or indirectly influencing uh, what South African farmers are doing, what they're choosing, what they're buying and how they're working? Thanks so much, Rupio. Um, so one of the challenges that I'd actually just like to highlight as an opportunity is definitely the sustainability landscape. So we are aware of the new Green Deal in the States and aware of the EU Green Deal. Um, these are underpinned by incentives from the government for processes to adopt more sustainable practices. And this is sort of market leaders charting the path, and that has led to a lot of MNCs, multinationals, now declaring sustainability targets and goals through 2020, 30 and 50. And a lot of them are being as ambitious to say we want to be net, net zero, so we don't pollute zero harm, no carbon emissions by 2050. So this gets passed down the value chain and it's a challenge at the moment for producers because the buyers being be it the multinationals or the retailers or whoever it is, they expect the specifications or the products to meet the specifications early on. So, for example, with cocoa, when sourcing cocoa, it needs to specifically be traceable all the way from I mean, the cocoa seed all the way through the nib, all the way up into now chocolate manufacturing, where is it manufactured, who are the people doing it? And those systems take a lot of money to create. And so just one of the challenges in South Africa is that the incentives are not yet in place, but it is expected of producers to be able to track and trace end to end the products. We will get there as a market, and we are looking out with keen eyes for when the incentives are going to be in place, specifically either from SA government, or from other governments that become available to non-European producers, even though the end users and end consumers are maybe domiciled in Europe. So that's probably the biggest opportunity is producers aligning their production methodologies to be more sustainable. Thank you uh, so much, Craig. Um, and I would like to add to that um, that you, you, you saw in Craig's presentation where he presents the, the, the biggest eight agricultural companies in, 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 in South Africa, uh, one of them uh, being Woolworths, uh, but also Tiger Foods. Uh, the South African consumer is uh, demanding more and more traceability, more and more uh, uh, um, uh, labels, green labels, uh, sustainability labels on the food. So, well, um, it's, uh, where, where, where Juha's question was uh, mostly about political pressures, uh, there's definitely also from consumer side um, such a development. Uh, if you if if you see, I, I had the pleasure of of interviewing uh, the, the the manager of sustainability at Woolworths uh, a month ago, and 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 they have uh, um, a whole division with uh, short term, long term projects um, to, 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 to 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 renovate to 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 make sure that their whole production line uh, from uh, farming practices, certifying practices, transport practices, packaging um, is, is, is really moving uh, uh, towards a greener and more circular future. So, so those, those, those developments definitely exist in South Africa uh, and, and, and in the rest of Africa. Um, I see a question uh, from my colleague Tuya and I see a hand from my colleague uh, Jenny and, 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 and Jenny is, is, is waving very excitedly. So. I'll, 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 and she's here in the room, so, so she can uh, physically harm me. Um, so I'll, I'll give Yeni. I'll give Yeni first, and then and then and then I'll, I'll ask two years question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Camilo. And apologies, I'm I'm taking a, a, a little bit of a bully uh, bullying uh, attitude here, as I'm in the room and I can ask the question. But uh, is this my question is actually kind of related to the previous one, um, with the you know the green um, green movement and environmental issues. Uh, but um, 
I also wanted to ask Craig about um, issues of animal welfare. Um, is this something that the um, you know the the animal <laughs> people that far farm with animals is that the is there a pressure also towards uh, uh, you know adding adding uh, uh, things that will <laughs> will will add to the animal welfare? Like I I was uh, telling shortly at the. Um, what the HK scan will be talking about uh, later on with, uh, you know, monitoring animal welfare with artificial, artificial intelligence and things like this. Um, is this something that that you can see happening in South Africa as well? I saw there was 6% um, of the inputs, um, of, of the cost of inputs was used for animal, well, animal health and crop production, uh, crop, crop protection. So is there also Beyond that, is there uh, investments that you have seen for animal welfare? Um, yeah, thanks. That was just my question. Thanks very much, Jenny. So we do have strong humane societies in South Africa, and we do have strong animal welfare advocacy in South Africa. And what we typically do see is producers are looking for ways that they can meet the balance of efficiency in terms of cost efficiency as well as animal care and animal welfare and it sometimes is a tough balance especially when the the base of operations are not all the same um, sometimes subsistence farmers do not have the same means just simply of caring for their animals in the same way that commercial farmers do have in the country so i think this kind of ties with uh, the, the next question but it is important there's actually a stat i was just looking for really quickly in terms of ag tech and what percentage of ag tech is actually going towards it is animal tech specifically so when we're looking at ag tech we're looking at sort of venture capital money and this is money that is early stage investment and it's, i haven't included it much in the next presentation so i'll just spend a minute on it but generally venture capital money is divorced from agri agriculture agriculture is a high risk low reward industry across the world that's how it works on the primary industry scale whereas venture capital looks for relatively high risk but enormous reward people in the angel funding and in the venture capital space talk about unicorns that's when they can take 200,000 euro or a million euro turn it into 400 800 percent increase in six years that seldom happens in agriculture so, but now what we are seeing is we're seeing venture capital is starting to spend money in agriculture this now means that because tech is getting involved, the returns can now start happening in agriculture. So the number I was looking for out of five billion dollars in venture capital in the subsector. Uh, just give me one second. In the subsector of. Um, spe you know, specifically ag tech. Not so specifically ag tech, not food technology. So now agriculture, te agricultural technology. Animal tech is 24%, so a billion dollars of global deal value is in animal tech. So when looking at animal welfare, that is included specifically in animal tech and animal welfare monitoring. So yeah, about 20% of deal value. Um, the source of this was a Finfasteer Ventures report released last year in 2020. Really great team, they produced some really great, great insights. Thank you, thank you, Craig, and, uh, and 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 very impressive. Uh, thanks for bringing up that number so quick, uh, and and I think uh, that makes everybody more excited about your future, your presentations in session A and session B, uh, where you really come with those with those kind of uh, deep insights. Um, so so thank you for that, and 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 and, and um, South Africa is really a country that loves animals, um, not not always on consumer level. People understand that cows and porks are animals too, uh, besides uh, giraffes and and and, and pets. Uh, but South Af so, so the South African audience uh, is, is is really an audience that that, that has warm warm feelings uh, and 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 and, and lot, of, lot of efforts to, towards animal welfare. So if the consumer can be educated uh, in including uh, livestock uh, into the animals that they send their love to, uh, then 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 that will definitely help. And that, that gets us also to, to Tuya's question, uh, which I think is a, is, is a really important question from the point of view that it's one of Finland's uh, uh, strong points is, is professional skill development. Um, so so if we if we look at at agriculture uh, and we have uh, both your, 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 your smallholder, you have your commercial farms, your large scale 
And if we see uh, particularly this transition towards a more technology-based agriculture, which is precisely why venture capital is probably finally discovering agriculture, because um, um, oh, there, there's so much going on in, 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 in technology, um, agricultural technology. Th th does that mean that, 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 that there are new skills? Uh, let me say something very simple. I don't know, a drone, uh, managing a drone, uh, to maybe oversimplify it. But um, what, what, what are the skills development needs, Craig, if you have anything to say upon that? Because I'm, I'm sure that uh, Finnish stakeholders would gladly establish such uh, collaborations. Great question, Tobias. Thank you. A friend of mine yesterday and I were actually discussing it. He works at Wine Tech, um, industry organization for wine in South Africa. Um, he was talking about tech readiness levels. And there's a survey, uh, T, so it's the TRL survey. It's internationally recognized as how ready for rollout is something. It ranges from levels one to nine, one being the base, nine being it's ready to commercially be scaled. Um, I just try to Google a quick picture. I'm just going to share my screen really quickly just so I can show what tech readiness levels look like. Um, so we see tech readiness levels being uh, from literally level one, still very conceptual research, basic principles through developmental phase, uh, experimental pilot versus now deployment nine. Now it's extensive implementation. Um, this isn't the only chart, but I mean that there are nine tech readiness levels and they're generally cut a couple different ways. But we see a lot of smallholder farmers as well as small companies in South Africa are at TRLs three and four. They need financial literacy training. Those are the skills development that are needed in companies. Financial literacy training for smallholders and for um, SMMEs, small and medium, uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, those are specifically needed. And then when talking about digitization, I mean now at the MNC level, that's where's BI going? I mean, Power BI is pretty much the one one stop shop for most multinationals in terms of push pull orders. But where's it going and where's it going from that? So it's really across the spectrum. But if you were to say what is one of the biggest needs, definitely financial literacy and the ability to do business with businesses, not only business with individuals, that would be the factor that unlocks the digitization in South African agriculture. Well, Greg, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and 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 I, um, I, I, I I I I agree on that. I I, I can see that, and and I, I can also um, may, maybe add that that um, as 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 uh, uh, Craig showed earlier, the, the the South African agricultural sector is definitely uh, innovating very fast. There's probably also all kinds of uh, skills development opportunities in 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 helping farmers adopt and, and manage these new technologies. And, and as you said, business intelligence uh, becoming a data driven companies um, and, and uh, the, the, the new generation of farmers will maybe be looking uh, more uh, at their tablets than at their soil. Uh, and um, so, so, so very good question to you, uh, which more or less brings us to the end of this block. Um, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for, for participating. Uh, once again, uh, reminding uh, everybody that we have the next block starting in half an hour. So that's at 11.30 Finnish time, at 10.30 South African time. And that uh, block will uh, um, focus on uh, water, soil, which includes fertilizer and energy, uh, or let's say the, 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 the natural enablers of agriculture and, and how uh, technology innovations um, uh, uh, can impact uh, and how Finnish uh, technology can assist the South African reality. And then we will meet Craig again, who will uh, give an overview and uh, three amazing uh, Finnish companies. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and, and looking forward to seeing you in, in, in half an hour.